Hello everyone, this is Frugal Engineer and today I bring you an Android Studio tutorial where I will show you how you can create your own stock tracker application in Android so you can manage your own stock investments. We'll be using the free Yahoo Finance API to get real-time stock prices from the stock market and update information in our app. If you remember, a couple of months ago I uploaded a video where I show you how you can integrate with the Yahoo Finance API using C Sharp. If you want to watch it, you will find the link to that video in the description below. In that same video, I also explain how you can create a free account to use that Yahoo Finance API. Back then, I realized I just made a really simple program, without any real application. And that's why I started working on this comprehensive Android application that will leverage the free Yahoo Finance API. Of course, as always in my videos, I will upload the source code to GitHub. Please feel free to check the link in the description below and make a copy of my project so you can test the application. Before we jump into the demo, I would like to let you know that this is a really simple beta version of my app. Apologies if the look and feel is not the nicest, and unfortunately, I didn't have the time to include all the functionalities that I had in mind in the first place. However, I will continue improving this application and uploading updates to YouTube, so please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my future videos. Okay, so let me show you now a demo of my um, Android application. Um, as you can see, the look and feel is quite sim simple. We don't have many options here in the main activity. Uh, we have the check my portfolio and then options. If we click here in options, um, we have mainly um, here where we can add the API credentials for the Yahoo Finance API. Again, if you don't have those credentials, uh, check my previous video, link in the description below, where I explain how you can create a, a, an account, a, a free account to use the Yahoo Finance API. And then we have a button of re reset app, but I will explain this later. If we go back, we can go to check my portfolio and now we don't have any values. Here is where we will see the complete list of all my uh, stock uh, stock positions that I have, uh, but I don't have anything. So the first thing we are going to do is just to go to add and we can uh, create here um, and add the my stock positions, my stock investments here. So for example, let's go for Apple. The first thing that we need to do is to select here the symbol. As you know, all stock um, all stocks have their own symbols. So for example, Apple have four digits. Um, Tesla will have also uh, four digits, but other values could have three digits. Uh, this is something that you can check easily on the internet. In the case, let's go for Apple. And let's say that I have uh, 20 um, stocks for Apple and then I was really lucky and I bought them when they were a uh, 50 50 dollars in the past here we select uh, when I bought them let's say that I bought them like in, in in 2013 and add them the value and now I have here in this dynamic list uh, just check that you have the gain and losses at zero here we add another value so for example let's go for 3m that is three M's, uh, let's say that I have, for example, 12 stocks, and in this case, I bought them when they were really expensive, $300, uh, $300. Um, and I, I'm just going to put this random date. Uh, by the way, I cannot set the currencies, it's something that I will add in the future, but not now. And I add this value here, and then let's add, for example, Tesla, that I think is LA, and then let's say that I have uh, uh, 30 stocks, for example, and I bought them, I don't know, when they were, when they were maybe $60, and then I bought them, I don't know, let's say, for example, in 2014, right? Uh, this is, I'm not using the dates at the moment, but they will be useful when I upload the app. Add it. Uh, just check again, those have zero values here. And what we are going to do now is we are going to refresh prices. The, the moment I click here, my app will go through all the uh, positions here and will get the real-time uh, market information from the Yahoo Finance API and will update my application. So I click here, oh, sorry, go back. I refresh the prices. 
will take just a couple of seconds and now we have the updated prices you can see here that um, I have a if, if I'm winning that position it, it will appear in green and if I'm losing it will appear in red uh, in this case for example Apple I'm, I'm uh, getting this amount of money and in Tesla I'm also getting this money however with 3m I'm losing this amount of money what I can do is I can click on this value and it will contain all the information from the stock all the information that I am using at the moment my idea again is to improve these uh, elements here uh, we can go back you want we can click in in another value and we'll see different information or we can continue adding elements um, if we close the app so for example if we go here and uh, we reopen the app here we will recover those elements uh, and i will explain why because i'm using a, a storage I'm, I'm saving this position to files but um the, i will explain how i did it in the in the um part where i will show the, the source code um, again we can add more values if you want uh, however uh, i just want to show you that we have the option here to uh, completely uh, reset the app uh, this can be useful for example if we want to delete all the operations just click here and this will delete the the app so next time i check my portfolio this uh, list is empty of course i cannot continue here and uh, again this has been the demo i will explain now the different classes and how i created it uh, but just keep in mind that it's really simple but i have a lot of plans to update it add new functionalities and even maybe in the future to publish it on the uh, google on the google play uh, store uh, for everyone to use let's now see the review of the code Let's jump now to review the integration diagram and the source code. I will not get into much details of the code, I don't want to bore you with a really long video, however I will point out the most interesting parts of the code. And I have plans to make more videos explaining certain parts of the code that I think are really interesting, like how I use recycle views on Android to generate dynamic lists and also how I manage asynchronous execution of different tasks in Android. In this integration diagram you can check that uh, we connect to the Yahoo Finance API to retrieve the real-time stock prices from the market and then we store all the information locally in a file in the Android that will allow us to keep the information once the user closes the app. Okay, so let's review now the general architecture of my applications. Uh, the first thing that you will see is that I have quite a lot of classes in my app and I have created different packages to classify the different classes depending on the functionality that they have on my app. Uh, the first one here are the uh, uh, classes related to the Android activity and here of course you have the, the XML those represents the visual elements that the user interacts so in the end the activities are the elements java classes and xml that allows the user to interact with um, uh, with my application so for example we have the main activity uh, here this is the uh, screen for the main activity and then we have here the source code and um, we have here for example the code related to the options uh, to change the options here we have the el element and um, Oh, and then um, something that I will explain a little bit later, things that I think is quite interesting is uh, here, they, we have here the uh, stock adapter, um, so in, or, in, order to, in, in order for me to uh, dynamically create a list of uh, stock positions, so for example if the user wants to have 20 stock positions and being able to dynamically render it, I use a functionality that is called recycle view. Uh, definitely I will create an app in the future to speak about that and to do some examples because I won't have much time to explain here on this video, but definitely this is uh, something that is helping a lot my app. And uh, again, I will leave some documentations on the um, uh, on the description of the video below so to, if you can check it and see how useful it could be next i want to talk about the stock classes here in this package i have three classes the stock stock operations and user stock position uh, the class stock what i have here is the uh, the class representation of the stop 
object the directory from the Yahoo Finance API. The Yahoo Finance API contains uh, the, res sorry, the response from the Yahoo Finance API contains a really big JSON. And what I can do is to serialize that big JSON on a uh, Java object. At the moment, I'm not using many of those fields as, as you can see here, but uh, this gives me a lot of options to improve improve the, the, the app uh, because we can add a lot of functionality based on the fields that I'm already fetching. Uh, the user stock position, this is a uh, is my generic or agnostic interpretation of the stock object. Uh, rather than the stock object is the stock position that the user has, the stock investment that the user has. And um, I have several information that I will use to roll the tool, for example, the acquisition price, number of stocks, currency, stock name, stock symbol, all of those that you have seen in the demo. And also we have the object, the original stock object that we can relate to this uh, object. Uh, so it's quite interesting. And also it makes sense to have this kind of uh, agnostic object because this is the object that we will use through all the app um, to um, uh, to retrieve the information from the user and it, again it makes sense uh, because in maybe in the future we want to add different sources of information apart from the Yahoo Finance API so it makes sense to have this interpretation. Finally the stock operations uh, basically is an auxiliary class that I'm using uh, to to do certain operations. In this case, for example, I used to calculate uh, if uh, uh, if an investment is a loss or a win. Okay, so let's review now the external classes. Um, here we have the classes that we use to integrate with external services. We have the API called Yahoo class that has the one is the one that has the logic to connect the Yahoo Finance API and to retrieve all of that real time market information. And of course, the um, the stock price, the last stock price, the one that we use to calculate the gains and losses is one of them. We have two functions, one of them to update only one um, one uh, stock investment and then we have one that we use to update all the stock investments that the user has uh, created in the app and then we have the file manager um, class and as, as i explained before what we do is we uh, save uh, all of the stock um, position from the user, all the stock investments, all the stock, all the stock information that the user created, we store them in, in a file. So once we close the app, we can then uh, retrieve that information once we open it again. Okay, let's review now the classes inside the AUX elements package. The first one is the AUX class, really simple one. What I have created here is a series of uh, constants that I will use across all my applications. I found this quite easy uh, to work with because if I need to change something, uh, a value of a constant, I just need to do it here and all my classes will use these constants or at least I try to do it. Then we have my applications. This is uh, an interesting, this is an, uh, quite an interesting class um, in my project. Uh, this class extends from the application class and we can use it to we can use it to declare global variables that can be accessed across all the applications. So I use it to keep the array list of all uh, user stock positions here. Uh, so then I can access from all the activities uh, from, and from all the applications and dynamically update it. Meaning if the user adds a new um, a position in a stock investment in the app, I will be able to access it through an update here and then access it through the application. Um, if you are um, interested in learning how to use this type of um, this type of, of, of global classes, if you could call them that like that, uh, let me know in the comments and maybe I can do a video uh, to just explain how useful they are. Finally, we have the safe preference, uh, safe preference class, really simple class. What I do is I use the uh, shared preference uh, class. This is a functionality that is offered by Android. And what it allows us to do is to store uh, small pieces of information in, in the Android app, a small pieces of information that, of course, are related to these uh, particular applications. Um, obviously, it, it, you cannot um, use them as, as 
long store uh, storage, like for example a file, but it's really useful to store uh, small pieces of information, for example, to store the uh, API, a API key and the a a API host. Uh, again, could be really useful uh, to store small pieces of information. Okay, so a special mention in my code to this uh, Rx Android library, that is a library based on ReactiveX. Um, this library, it allows us to uh, execute a synchronous code uh, in a way that won't block the main execution of our program. So, uh, for example, if we need to uh, refresh all the uh, stock values and get the uh, last price from the market, from the Yahoo Finance API, that's a really time-consuming task that could block our application. Thanks to this library, it allows us to uh, control that execution and not, and not block uh, the user interface. How it works is, is uh, quite simple, but it's definitely something that I will do a video in the future to explain uh, how useful it can be. Uh, we have these elements that are the observables, and basically those elements, what they do is they emit, uh, here you can see, they emit values uh, that you can then observe in another parts of the app, uh, meaning that uh, this element here will take the responsibility to do the, the heavy execution, and then when the execution is finish it will emit that value um, and of, of course the application won't be uh, blocked um, and then here what we have is um, we observe the observable uh, observable meaning that um, we just uh, keep it keep it um, keep it observing it and then when we get the value then we do the operation in case of my app I um, once I finally get the values from the Yahoo Finance API I uh, save them to a file and I refresh uh, my app uh, again the yeah, super useful library that definitely I will do a bit in the future because I think is super useful to control the execution Okay, so before we finish the video, I would like to tell you some of the improvements I have in mind for my app. For example, add support to more type of products like EDFs, improve the dashboards to add extra functionality, like for example, uh, add more details to the stock that the user can cre uh, create, the stock investments, add functionalities to check the performance of any of the investment through times, for example, using charts and uh, advanced dashboards, uh, of course, improvement on the look and feel of the app, improvements of how the API credentials are stored, etc. Of course, if you have uh, any suggestions, feel free to leave them on the comments of the video. Well, this is everything I had in mind for this video. I hope you like it. Please, if you enjoyed it, press the like button and subscribe. Any feedback is a really good motivation for me to continue working on more videos. Thank you so much until the next video.